In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Hello, my name is Major Mike Webb, and for those who don't yet know me, I am a conservative candidate for Congress in Virginia's 8th Congressional District, what by metrics is the Congressional District with the least amount of faith in the United States, as recorded by church membership as well as affiliation with a faith denomination. And since the beginning of the pandemic crisis, my intent to travel to be a political candidate was overwhelmed by forces beyond my personal control. Finding me in the courts of the Commonwealth of Virginia, ironically, amongst other things, attempting to protect persons of faith in enjoyment of their free exercise rights guaranteed by the First Amendment of the Constitution. Poetically, one might say in allusion to the prophetic literature of the Old Testament, my intent to travel to Tarsus, the birthplace of the apostle formerly known as Saul, before his plans were changed on a road to Damascus, an intended destination of a prophet named Jonah to do what I had wanted to do was diverted like Jonah before he was directed by the God of Abraham to travel to fulfill God's will in a town called Nineveh. Every calling story in the Bible begins with a normal person expressing some reluctance and hesitation. And that was certainly true with mine. But it makes absolute sense as to why, in reflection, a God in heaven might be interested in a politician like me for this unique mission during an unprecedented time. I am, by credential, a retired Army Ranger and military intelligence officer. But at another time in my life when forces beyond my control disrupted what I had intended to do, I was granted an unprecedented opportunity to take on a dream job after graduation from the Intelligence Training Center at Fort Huachuca, Arizona, to work in what is called Echelon Above Core Strategic Counterintelligence. Like any newly commissioned Butterbar Lieutenant, I spent about six months learning how to operate as a, in a tactical maneuver battalion, conducting intelligence preparation of the battlefield, understanding doctrinal templates for orders of battle, learning how to identify pieces of enemy equipment and aircraft by silhouette, as well as their doctrinal placement on a battlefield briefing the modified combined obstacle overlay and preparing intelligence estimates. Many skills that had returned during a pandemic crisis. But rather than being assigned to an infantry or armor battalion to prepare to fight a battle someplace in the world, forces beyond my control back then placed me at a place significantly higher up the chain of command where senior military officers and personnel prepared to fight the entire war strategic vision and anticipate the wars of the future. And when the wall came down in Europe, marking the destruction of an evil communist empire, one of those wars for which we began to anticipate was the potential for biological warfare. So it was at least providential in uncommon luck that before a pandemic crisis arose, someone or some force had already prepared to bring me up to speed for this once-in-a-lifetime contingency. A fact that you can interpret in any way you like. But for the next few moments, let's not just be weakened warriors for the faith, but act like real soldiers of the cross and do what soldiers do by going into a security hole, 
taking a knee and conducting an after-action or at least in-progress review of what happened and the actions on the objective during a pandemic crisis that has resulted in the closings of one in five churches, not just across America, but also right here in Virginia. A battle we are still fighting in the courts after places of worship were finally permitted to reassemble to engage in their devotional practice in observance of a sincerely held religious belief, as is their guaranteed right under the United States Constitution. With a goal for this moment of reflection to gain some insight to assist the faith community and faith leaders in moving forward as the nation continues to fight what has been called an invisible enemy. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. As most are aware, on March 17th, which those in the Roman Catholic faith tradition will certainly recognize as coincident with the celebration of St. Patrick's Day or the Feast of St. Patrick, observing the day of his death, as well as celebrating the arrival of Christianity in Ireland. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, who has repeatedly described himself, at least in the courts, as a man of great faith, issued a grand decree outlawing non-essential gatherings of 10 or more persons withdrawing their First Amendment rights to peaceable assembly under the pretext of a response to a pandemic pathogen that has been described as a communicable disease. A necessary empirical finding to empower Governor Northam with the authorization to issue such a sweeping order. As my geometry professor used to say, if it's not in the contract, you can't do it. On March 7th, the City of Alexandria Department of Health issued the following press release. A U.S. Marine at Fort Belvoir has tested positive for the COVID-19 coronavirus. Virginia health officials confirmed today. Governor Northam and cabinet officials have been briefed. Officials at Fort Belvoir Community Hospital and the Virginia Department of Health are working cooperatively according to long-standing public health protocols. The teams are in regular and close communication with federal, state, local, and private sector partners. Public health officials caution that evidence has not been seen of COVID-19 spreading in Virginia and said risk is low. Again, that is on March 7th. Public health officials remind people in Virginia, it continued, and on military installations to take precautions. And ironically, on that same day, in the city of Alexandria, myself and approximately 2,000 others participated in the annual St. Patrick's Day Parade, marching down King Street, a major business center in that suburban community across the river from the nation's capital. Before that, on February 26th, the first laboratory confirmed case in the entire United States military was reported involving an army soldier stationed in Daegu, South Korea, one of the hottest hotspots in that democratic nation shortly after the emergence of a novel coronavirus discovered in Wuhan. And even at that time, believed to have arisen from an outbreak described as pneumonia of unknown etiology 
that appear to have zoonotically evolved in the Hunan seafood wholesale market. One of the largest wet markets in China and in the largest city in the central mainland of the People's Republic of China. And described by the Wall Street Journal as a scruffy complex of 1,000 stalls spread over an area the size of nine football fields. A total of only 27 cases of infection were tied to that location as announced on December 31st by the Chinese Center for Disease Control and by January 14th with a total of only 41 laboratory confirmed cases both they and the World Health Organization could only discern what appeared to be evidence of a pathogen being transmitted from person to person only among families. A fact which the Assistant Deputy General for the World Health Organization in an interview with Vox Media on March 2nd, updated on March 3rd, continued to describe as not surprising, even after reviewing over 59,000 laboratory confirmed cases of a novel coronavirus creating a disease condition of COVID-19 by the end of February and finding these because families are exposed and how much virus they are shedding. On March 15th, the city of Alexandria, on orders from the governor, issued meeting guidance, gathering, meeting and gathering guidance to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The guidance stated that the general public is currently at low risk because we are not yet seeing transmission where the source is unknown. This assessment of a low risk and the determination that the governor had not yet seen any evidence of transmission human to human of a pathogen about which the source was unknown bears special legal significance because under VA code section 32.1-48.06, the governor was required at that time to have definitively identified an affected area known to have been exposed to or infected with or who are reasonably suspected to have been exposed to or infected with a communicable disease of public health threat, thereby exceeding or abusing his statutory authority. Yet on that date, Governor Northam had banned all public gatherings of more than 100 persons or more. And this statement of guidance was intended to inform those organizations and events that fell outside the range of prohibited conduct. This guidance statement specifically stated to organizers of events involving less than 100 persons and listing very first religious services stated that best practices were being provided for continuing operations in response to a novel coronavirus, but further emphasized at the time, assessed as a low risk, that whether non-prohibited gatherings should continue as normal was entirely dependent upon those events and organizations deemed essential or non-essential. And in response, even before the issue of the statewide mandate outlawing gatherings of 10 or more persons, over 90% of places of worship in Virginia issued notices to their membership that worship services thereafter would be discontinued indefinitely. And in direct consequence of or direct and proximate causation by that lockdown order, unemployment claims in Virginia, according to a report in the business leader, catapulted from 2,706 claims reported the week prior to 46,885 and were projected to double by the beginning of summer. A blow to the American economy that Axios compared to the economic equivalent of a Hurricane Katrina in every American state and a direct and proximate consequence of that order by the time of reopening was the tragic consequence that according to the Christian Post, 
one in five churches across America will never open their doors again. Both were the actions on the objective or what happened. In other videos, we will follow up on other aspects of this event. But for now, to summarize what occurred, we can reasonably assume that no community of faith leader has at his disposal a special staff officer or subject matter expert section dedicated like a tactical battalion commander has assigned to his organization to advise him like the staff judge advocate in the army. The function that I once performed for the 2nd Ranger Battalion, an elite quick reaction light infantry battalion ready to deploy anywhere in the world in 18 hours to respond to contingencies of national security significance. To acquaint you with the applicable federal laws that are implicated by this fact pattern beginning with 18 U.S.C. Section 1951 or what is popularly referred to as the Hobbs Act. Under the Hobbs Act, whoever in any way or degree obstructs, delays, or affects commerce or the movement of any article or commodity in commerce by robbery or extortion or attempts or conspires so to do or commits or threatens physical violence to any person or property in furtherance of a plan or purpose to do anything in violation of this section shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. Under the act, the term extortion means the obtaining of property from another with his consent, voluntary consent, but induced by wrongful use of actual or threatened force, violence or fear, or under color of official right. I repeat, under color of official right, often phrased as under color of law. And under VA code section 44-146.16, yeah, within the Commonwealth of Virginia, which as stated in the guidance dated March 15th, did not exist at the time. I repeat, did not exist at the time. And most recently in a DACA decision by the United States Supreme Court, Department of Homeland Security versus Board of Regents for the University of California, that opinion that was heralded by many progressives across the state and across the nation, including the, by the governor, even publicly at the COVID-19 update in Fairfax County, just after that decision was handed down, stated that judicial review of agency action or state action is limited to the ground that the agency invoked when it took the action, classified at the time. Moreover, under 10 CFR 1047.7, in language similar to that found under the Virginia Code, deadly force means that force which a reasonable person would consider likely to cause death or serious bodily harm. On April 13th, Michelle Borstein, the religion reporter for the Washington Post, published a story about a prominent Richmond area minister, Bishop Gerald Glenn, age 66 and founder and leader since 1995 of the New Deliverance Evangelistic Church in Chesterfield, where she stated forebodingly, Glenn preached in church about the virus in March before he became sick, encouraging people not to be afraid. On March 22nd, five days after Virginia Governor Ralph Northam D. had urged people to avoid non-essential gatherings of more than 10 people, Glenn told his congregation that I firmly believe that God is larger than this dreaded virus, according to a video played April 6th by Richmond Station WTBR. And he said, go tell his people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, 
lest they see you with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand within their heart and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away and there'll be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth and it shall be turned and shall be eaten as a tail tree and as an oak whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. My name is Major Mike Webb and I am running for U.S. Congress with liberty, honor, and excellence. By God, we shall make America great again. Honest. This advertisement was authorized by Mike Webb.